Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Wednesday, October 14th, 2020. I pray that as we spend this time together in God's word, God will use his word to strengthen our faith in him and increase our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our savior. We begin today with Psalm 114. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people who spoke a foreign language, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled. The Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why was it, sea, that you fled, Jordan that you turned back, mountains that you skipped like rams, hills like lambs? Tremble, earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool, the flint into a spring. Yesterday, Moses introduced the concept that the Lord wanted his people to worship him in one place, which he would reveal to them uh, when they entered the land of Canaan. Today, we're going to hear Moses continue to talk about that and again emphasize the importance of remaining faithful to the Lord. Be careful not to offer your burnt offerings in all the sacred places you see. You must offer your burnt offerings only in the place the Lord chooses in one of your tribes, and there you must do everything I command you. But whenever you want, you may slaughter and eat meat within any of your city gates, according to the blessing the Lord your God has given you. Those who are clean or unclean may eat it, as they would a gazelle or deer. But you must not eat the blood, pour it on the ground like water. Within your city gates, you may not eat the tenth of your grain, new wine, or fresh oil, the firstborn of your herd or flock, any of your vow offerings that you pledge, your freewill offerings, or your personal contributions. You are to eat them in the presence of the Lord your God at the place the Lord your God chooses, you, your son and daughter, your male and female slave, and the Levite who is within your gates. Rejoice before the Lord your God in everything you do, and be careful not to neglect the Levite as long as you live in your land. When the Lord your God enlarges your territory as he has promised you, and you say, I want to eat meat because you have a strong desire to eat meat, you may eat it whenever you want. If the place where the Lord your God chooses to put his name is too far from you, you may slaughter any of your herd or flock he has given you, as I have commanded you, and you may eat it within your city gates whenever you want. Indeed, you may eat it as the gazelle and deer are eaten. Both the clean and the unclean may eat it. But don't eat the blood, since the blood is the life, and you must not eat the life with the meat. Do not eat blood. Pour it on the ground like water. Do not eat it so that you and your children after you will prosper, because you will be doing what is right in the Lord's sight. But you are to take the holy offerings you have and your vow offerings and go to the place the Lord chooses. Present the meat and blood of your burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord your God. The blood of your other sacrifices is to be poured out beside the altar of the Lord your God, that you may eat the meat. Be careful to obey all these things I command you, so that you and your children after you may prosper forever, because you will be doing what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. When the Lord your God annihilates the nations before you, which you are entering to take possession of, and you drive them out and live in their land. Be careful not to be ensnared by their ways after they have been destroyed before you. Do not inquire about their gods, asking, how did these nations worship their gods? I'll also do the same. You must not do the same to the Lord your God, because they practice every detestable act which the Lord hates for their gods. They even burn their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. Be careful to do everything I command you. Do not add anything to it or take anything away from it. In our New Testament reading today, we continue reading from Matthew chapter 12, where Jesus gives the sign of Jonah and also talks about who are his brothers and his sister and his mother. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered them, An evil and adulterous generation demands a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. 
For as Jonah was in the belly of the huge fish three days and three nights, so the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at Jonah's preaching. And look, something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And look, something greater than Solomon is here. When an unclean spirit comes out of a person, it roams through waterless places looking for rest, but doesn't find any. Then it says, I'll go back to my house that I came from. Returning, it finds the house vacant, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and settle down there. As a result, that person's con last condition is worse than the first. That's how it will also be with this evil generation. While he was speak still speaking with the crowds, his mother and brothers were standing outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to the one who was speaking to him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Yesterday in our theological writing, we heard about the purpose of the law, that it shows us our sin. Today, as we read from the solid declaration, the formula of Concord, we continue to hear about the purpose that the law serves in our lives. As far as the old Adam is concerned, which still clings to believers, he must be driven not only by the law, but also by punishments. Nevertheless, he does everything against his will and under coercion, no less than the godless are driven and held in obedience by the law's threats. This doctrine of the law is needed by believers in order that they may not make up a holiness and devotion of their own. Using God's spirit as an excuse, they must not set up self-chosen worship without God's word and command. For it is written, you shall not do according to whatever is right in your own eyes, but be careful to obey all these words that I command you. You shall not add to it or take from it. The doctrine of the law is also necessary in and with the use of believers' good works. Otherwise, a person can easily imagine that his work and life are entirely pure and perfect. But God's law prescribes good works to believers in this way. It shows and indicates at the same time, as in a mirror, that in this life works are still imperfect and impure in us. So we must say with the beloved Paul, I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. So Paul, when encouraging the regenerate to do good works, clearly presents to them the 10 commandments. He recognizes from the law that his good works are imperfect and impure. And David declares, I will run in the way of your commandments but enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, O Love, How Deep. For us he prayed, for us he taught, for us his daily works he wrought, by words and signs and actions thus still seeking not himself but us. And we pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time in God's word with me today. God richly bless your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.